making mini prawn spring roll. Anyway, I'm making small spring roll. Very cute. Cute spring roll with a lot of dipping sauce. You always need good dipping sauce. Okay, let's go make the roll. I gotta start with the filling. I gotta chop the prawn. I don't like the food persister. No, I simple lady. Prawn, put on the board. Okay, now chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. See, don't take long. Let's washing up. Just put it in the bowl. Oh, got a nice fresh prawn here. Now I need to clean it up a little bit. Where my son-in-law? He's not good to cleaning anyway. Not like Marion, she's a good girl. Now I'm gonna make the flavor in. A little bit of garlic. Full cup garlic, pound it up. Just take the skin off. Pound to the smooth paste. Put in with the prawn. Now some soy sauce. And a little bit of sesame oil. This is a nice aroma. Gonna have a good flavor. Now gonna get rice texture. Must add egg whites. Crack to the bowl first. You know a secret ingredient? Corn flour or cornstarch. It's the same thing. This could make the texture good and sticky. A little bit of white pepper. And some salt. Now, okay, we mix it all up. Now we ready to roll, like rock and roll. No tip for spring roll wrapper. Must keep under wet tea towel. That's why it's gonna be dry out. See, gonna be like this. This is the side we want. Sometimes they come big like this. Just cut to the corner. Or you can make big one too, up to you. Take one wrapper and the pure. You can see. Little bit filling on here. Now before you start wrapping, have to make the flour glue. This one just plain flour and the water. Have to hold the spring roll stick together. Other people can use uh, egg, but it doesn't stick. You hold the inner edges, one, and roll it up. Let's only see how they cute all this. I've been making spring roll for a long time. Asian mom make the best spring roll. Oh, look at that, my spring roll. Very first Miss Mary and Dad. I make him spring roll too. He loves it. You choose all make spring roll. The people you love. Make it oil nice and hot. The testing, you can put wooden chopstick. When you're bubbling, they're ready. Now put the spring roll in. Don't put too many. Too cloudy, oil not hot. Oh, look at the bubbling. We want nice golden color. Oh, this is so cute. Many spring roll. Little cutie, just like Marion. Look, a nice spring roll. Now scoop it out. You look at the color. Drain in paper towel. Oh, yummy and fresh. See, if you cook the right temperature, no oily, just good spring roll. Serve it all up with your dipping sauce.
I have coconut karaja, coconut sweet chili, and spicy sweet chili. See, oh, the Marian special soup. I like to have all of this now. Must have all three in my fridge. Marian very smart, you know. She get her from noise. <laughs> just put a little bit of coriander just for decoration. Oh, look at that. Another winner from Noi. So let's just have an appreciation moment for those glistening, porky, spicy noodles. Ah, oh, I don't even know what I can tell you about this one, guys. It is epic. These are my spicy pork hand pulled noodles. So you guys know we do a lot of noodles on this channel, but I'm gonna come right out and say, I think these are at the very top. So if you kind of imagine like the very best, most unctuous Italian pork ragu, and then combine that with Szechuan spicy flavors and hand pulled noodles and all the good things, then you've got this dish. <laughs> okay, let's get started on the sauce first of all. So this is the simple part. We want some oyster sauce some soy sauce, some dark soy sauce, sugar, and just a little dash of vinegar here. So if you can get a hold of Chinese black vinegar, that would be the best one to use. I've just got some regular rice vinegar here. And just give that a mix. Now the porky sauce part of this dish is totally not traditional at all, but it's really tasty, just trust me. On this one, I'm gonna heat up a wok or a large frying pan, add some oil, and then here's our very first non-traditional ingredient and that is some cherry tomatoes. Now stand back because this is gonna splash a little. Now what you wanna do here is really blister those tomatoes. I want them to get all caramelized and charry on the outside and that's when they'll release all their sweetness and flavor. So we're kind of like wok roasting, I guess, rather than oven roasting. Okay, now see that color on that tomato? That's exactly what we want. And why tomatoes? So tomatoes have a natural amount of glutamates, which is flavor and umami and all those good things. Now I'm gonna add some garlic and some ginger. Now I'm gonna go in with some spices, some ground Szechuan peppercorns. These guys are gonna give a beautiful numbing sensation and a very high kind of citrus note to them. And some chili powder. And now here's the next non-traditional ingredient and that is sweet paprika. This is gonna give us a beautiful red color without flavoring the dish too much. It's really good if you don't wanna use a heap of chili powder because you can keep it really mild. Now for the pork. And when that pork is just about cooked, pour in that sauce that we made earlier. Now turn the heat down a little bit, just let that pork simmer away and soak up all of that flavor. Just a couple of minutes. Okay, so this pork is looking good. You guys will not believe the amount of intense flavor we have in there in such a short amount of time. I'm just gonna turn this off for a minute and let's go talk about our noodles. So I've got some hand pulled noodles here. You can find the video on how to make these on my YouTube channel. They're at the point now where I wanna stretch them a little more as I put them into the boiling water. Now you just wanna stretch these out straight into the water. And these noodles are kind of like a very rustic, hearty, chewy, beautiful texture to them. Uh, they kind of remind me, I guess, of like an Italian pappardelle or a fresh Italian pappardelle. Uh, so if you did want to use a pasta or an udon noodle as well, that would be a good substitute. You don't have to go to the trouble of making these from scratch, although it is worth it. These only need a couple of minutes, but before they're finished, I'm gonna scoop out some of this cooking liquid in case I wanna thin down my sauce a little bit later on. Okay, so these are looking good. Take them over to my sauce. Turn that heat on under the sauce and get those noodles in there. And now this is the part I love. Give everything a mix in there. Oh, look at that beautiful sauce and those noodles. Now some of that starchiness from the noodles is thickening up that sauce. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that cooking liquid that we saved, just a dash and mix that through. 
smell right now. So incredible. Now just pop this out onto a serving plate. And just a little sprinkling of spring onion. And there you go, spicy pork, hand pulled noodles. I mean, I just, I don't know what is better than this. Look at that, look at that beautiful noodle. Oh. The flavor of the Szechuan peppercorn on that beautiful, a little bit of tanginess from that vinegar really comes through. But I'm telling you, those noodles, they are the star of the show. Mm, chewy. Beautiful texture. Soaking up all of that porky tomato sauce. Mm, lost for words. Don't be put off by steaming an Asian style fish at home. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks for making this super delish dish. So I know not all of you are gonna have one of these big giant Chinese bamboo steamers. If you do, that's great. You can use it for this dish. If not, a little later on, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own steamer set up just with regular kitchen equipment. But first up, we're gonna start at the end. I'm going to prepare a little bit of a garnish first of all. And I'm gonna start with some spring onion. Okay, so take your spring onions and just cut them in half first of all. And then grab a hold of the sort of white end and just try and slice through lengthways without getting any of your fingers. Um, and just slice everything into fairly fine strips. Now you'll see why we want everything so fine in a minute because it's gonna help with the shape of our finished spring onions. We're gonna make curly spring onions, that's what we're doing. Now with the greens, it's a little easier. I just sort of bunch them up and just slice. Okay, now just throw these into a bowl of some cold water and we'll come back and see how pretty these are at the end. In the meantime, let's deal with our fish. So I'm using some beautiful sea bass fillets today. Any kind of white uh, fish fillet is fine. Actually, you know, I've done this with salmon as well. It works well. So this is a great one to use for any kind of fish, really. And I want to flavor it with some ginger. And the best way to peel your ginger is just with a teaspoon. And now I want some really nice fine shards of ginger. So the way we do that is slice this way first and then lengthways into beautiful thin strips. Mm, I love the smell of ginger, it is so comforting and beautiful and aromatic, ah, oh, yum. Okay, now lay these strips of ginger out on top of your fish. I go hard on the ginger because I like it, but totally up to you how much you'd like to use. And now we need a sauce. So really simple, a little bit of soy sauce and some lime. And I like to just sort of push down a bit on my lime on the chopping board just to release all the juices inside. Squeeze that in with the soy sauce. Okay, a little mix. And then that gets poured over the top of our fish and ginger. Now let's talk about the steaming setup. So I'm just gonna use any old kind of wide, quite deep pan, and then make sure you've got a tight fitting lid that will go on top of that. Now what we need to do is make ourselves a little trivet and just take some foil, bunch or fold it up into a long piece. And now just roll it round until you've got a nice sort of round circle. And this is gonna keep the bottom of the plate up from the bottom of the pan. Okay, pop that into your pan. Now, your plate, and I should have mentioned earlier, you should make sure that your plate is smaller <laughs> than your pan, obviously. And then that sits quite nicely and firmly on top of our foil. Just push that down, make sure. And now we wanna fill the pan up with some water and you want it to come almost to like the bottom of the plate. You need a steady hand. Don't be pouring water all over your fish. <laughs> Now turn the heat on up high, first of all, and I just want to wait until I can start to see a little bit of steam coming up from the water before I put the lid on. So I can see the little tendrils of steam coming up from that water. So I'm going to put the lid on and these fish fillets are around about 200 grams or about seven ounces. So I find with that size fillet, it's usually around 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, steaming time but if you've got thicker fillets or you're using salmon you might need to keep them in there a little longer. 
Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and before my fish has finished cooking, I'm going to heat up a little bit of oil. Now this is another key tip to getting this like restaurant style version at home. So what we wanna do is add a little bit of vegetable oil and some sesame oil into a saucepan. And it should be pretty quick to heat up because it's only a little bit of oil. And as soon as I can see those little bubbles forming when I pop a wooden spoon into the oil, that's when I know it's ready. So I'll just keep it warm on the stove top, but I'll turn the heat off because I don't want to overheat the oil. And let's have a look at our fish. Mm, the smell of that ginger and the soy sauce are oh, so good. Ultimate comfort food right here. Okay, now use a tea towel because you don't want to burn your little fingers. Carefully lift that plate out and over onto like a cutting board or something because the plate is hot, you don't want to burn your bench top. And now check out our amazing spring onions that have turned all curly and lovely and pretty. Okay, just put a whole bunch of those on top of each fillet. And I love that there's so much sauce in this dish because I like to serve this with some steamed rice and I pour that sauce all over my rice. It's the perfect bowl for me. And now for the magical sizzle. Now we'll kind of take out some of the harshness of the onion and add a beautiful sesame oil fragrance as well. And just because you know me and I love a little bit of extra spice, I'm gonna throw on a few slices of chili there as well. And there you have it guys, easy. You can make it at home with no special equipment. Plus you can still make it as epic as a restaurant. Trust me, you guys are gonna love this one. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, why not hit the like button? And even better, I would love so much if you would subscribe and even hit that little bell button so you get notified every time I release a new delicious video. Thanks guys.